Tonight's game is being brought to you by Bud Light, Amana, and Counter Lock and Load. Live from Les Bryant Arena in Evanston, Illinois, the Iowa Hawkeyes beat the Northwestern Wildcats. Iowa tries to break a two-game losing streak and take a step closer to the final 64 in the NCAA tournament. Good evening, everyone. I'm Larry Morgan with Mac McCausen. Mac, so far, we've talked about the Hawkeyes trying to get to the tournament. We've not used the term must game. What about tonight? Are you going to use it tonight? Well, must is awful close. Let's take a page and a quote from Tom Davis where he says, this would be a very, very big step in getting the Hawkeyes to the tournament. So a win here almost assures the Hawkeyes of a tournament, a loss. They certainly can't feel good going back to Iowa City. The Wildcats boast one of the nation's top three-point shooters in Todd Leslie. His 51 percentage is second best in the country. Is that the way that Northwestern could be the biggest threat to Iowa tonight? I certainly think the outside game has to be effective for Northwestern to have a chance. And you've got Leslie, as you said, has done very, very well. At one point, 15 for 15 from three-point range. That is an NCAA record, an excellent shooter. But sometimes he's a little slow in getting it off like Iowa City, then he's not a threat. Now, the Hawkeyes have A.C. Earl, who's been dominant inside, another honor for A.C. this week, all district. Will that be Iowa's game plan, to go inside? Well, certainly rebounding has become Iowa's forte, and A.C. Earl, not only an excellent rebounder, he wants that black shot record in the Big Ten. Four, and he ties, five, he has the new record. A.C. Earl, along with the other Hawkeyes, will be very active in the inside. The Wildcats have lost 17 in a row. Should they be taken lightly? I don't think you can ever take Northwestern lightly. They've been very effective in the last five or six games, and they're looking for one win. This could be it. And in conference play, Northwestern has lost 20 in a row since they beat Iowa on this floor last year. For the Hawkeyes, a very, very big game. We'll have the starting lineup next. Gentlemen, let's meet tonight's starting lineups. First, for the Iowa Hawkeyes, at forward, a 6'4 junior from Carson, California, number 24, James Moses. For the Wildcats, a 6'5 senior from Long Beach, California, number 24, Don Gross. At the other forward for the Hawkeyes, a 6'8 freshman from Indianola, Iowa, number 40, Chris Street. And for the Wildcats, a 6'11 freshman from the Pier, Wisconsin, number 55, Kevin Rankin. Center for the Hawkeyes, a 6'5 freshman from Joliet, Illinois, number 23, James Winters. And in the middle for the Wildcats, a 6'9 sophomore from Missouri City, Texas, number 40, Charles Howell. For the Hawkeyes at guard, a six-foot junior from Palmer, Iowa, number 11, Troy Skinner. For the Wildcats, a 6'5 sophomore from Palatine, Illinois, number 14, Todd Leslie. At the other guard for Iowa, a 6'2 sophomore from Wichita, Kansas, number 20, Val Barnes. And for the Wildcats, a 6'1 freshman from Leavenworth, Kansas, number 23, Pat Baldwin. Notice that when the Wildcats are introduced, Lucius Reese not starting that due to a broken finger. Bill Foster has had a tough time turning it around at Northwestern. 37 victories and 101 losses, his record. On the other hand, Tom Davis, the fourth all-time winningest coach in Hawkeye history. Now, for the Hawkeyes tonight, a big game back. They can still finish any place between fifth and eighth in the standings. And right now, the Hawkeyes are looking to move up and tie for that fifth place position. It certainly would enhance their chances for the NCAA to be up there with Wisconsin and Purdue. It, this is a must game for the Hawkeyes. The men working the game tonight, Tom Rucker on the left, Gary Muncy in the middle, said Rhoda Heffer on the right. And they get the award for the best smiles for officials this year in the Big Ten. For Iowa and Northwestern, 128th meeting tonight. The Hawkeyes have won 24 of the last 28. 
but again, Iowa, the last team to lose the Northwestern in a conference game. And the Wildcats, this is their final home game, Mac, and they've got to be pretty excited about this one. Well, they have a chance. They honestly believe, uh, talking to the coaching staff today, they looked at the film, of course, the Iowa-Purdue game, and they saw where Iowa started to slip a little bit in their intensity, and think here at home they can get the Hawkeyes. Winners getting the starting call at 6-5, jumps against Rankin at 6-11, and it's Iowa with the basketball. Tom Davis using his 12th different starting combination with winners in. And of course, A.C. Earl still coming off the bench for the second game. Northwestern starting out man-to-man, -man, but Larry, they'll use everything, man-to-man -man zone, and they use some of the trick defenses where they'll go two or three men man-to-man -man in a couple people's zone. Moses passing to Earl, but Rankin has the block, and here come the Wildcats. And it's batted out of bounds by Winters. And the Hawkeyes in Iowa City used almost exclusively man-to-man -man defense. And see how they start out? Man-to-man -man right away. Baldwin did not get the bounce, and the Iowa Hawkeyes will try to take the first lead in the ballgame. No score. Game 45 seconds old. In deep, it is winners. James from nearby Joliet, Illinois, and has about six of his family and friends in the stands to watch this one. Underneath, it is Baldwin. A very quick guard from Leavenworth, Kansas, ties the score at two. He's really one of the fine freshmen in the Big Ten. And you look now, you'll see Northwestern switch up. They go zone. What that does makes Iowa take more time to recognize, set up their offense, and that's the benefit to the Wildcats because with Lucius Reese out, they've really lost one of their main rotation people. They've got fewer people. They want to make Iowa take more time off the clock, let their players rest a little bit. With Reese gone, they're down to a 12-man roster, four of the walk-ons. Skinner looking inside the street. And Chris gets it home. Street had a tough time against Purdue as he missed all five of his shots on Saturday night. But Street quickly scores in this one, and Iowa has the lead. On the baseline, it's one of the two seniors in the lineup, Brooks. Brooks wrapping up a career. Saturday against Illinois, he had a career high, 22 points, so he's finishing in style. Here's Rankin, a talented freshman pivot who scores, and the game's tied at four. It really won't surprise me with Northwestern staying with Iowa in the early part of the game. It may be late in the game, if Northwestern wears down, you'll see the difference in benches. Baldwin with the steal, gets it underneath the Brooks, and he is fouled. Baldwin with a steal may be an expression we use a bit tonight, Mac, because he is 13th in the country in steals. Extremely quick hands. Right there, though, what he did was play the passing lane, stayed back, and then flies through the passing lane, anticipating that pass. Skinner trying to draw the charge, and the team leader, Brooks, gets that foul on him. Northwestern is second in the country in free throw percentage as a team, 77% from the line. Brooks, however, one of their four free throw shooters at 61%, but he gives the Wildcats the lead. Yeah, the Wildcats right behind, I think it's Butler, number one in the country. Butler, by the way, an upset victim in their tournament today. They got beat by Loyola of Chicago. So Northwestern has their first lead on the Broads free throws at six to four. Odell Davis now in the lineup for the Hawkeyes, and of course he's from this area, from Dixmore, Illinois. And A.C. Earl also coming in with the dead ball. A.C. from the other side of the state from Moline. The drive by Davis, and the Hawkeyes tie it up at six. Rhodes over A.C. Earl, and Rodell Davis pulls down the rebound. Rankin into the air and then scores, and Iowa takes the lead at 8-6. to six. That's really become a good secondary break for Iowa. Skinner coming down, looking for Ace Hero, already establishing low post position. That ball board of basketball, averaging
averaging 13.3 a game, 81 steals this year. That is his most outstanding statistic. Brooks, and A.C. Earl has the rebound. Get it back on you! Hawkeyes trying to add to an 8-6 lead. Here's Rodell Davis shooting a pass for A.C. Earl. Rebound taken down by Ty Leslie, 6'5 sophomore, local product from Palatine, Illinois. Off the baseline, Charles Howell puts it in. And it's tied up for the fourth time at eight. Rodell just missed everything, only drew the air. Northwestern getting it down in a hurry, but a traveling violation is called. And that's the game's first turnover of that particular variety. There have been a couple of passes stolen. So we're just into the ball game. 15-48 left to play in the first half. Game all tied at eight. And Northwestern tied at eight. Matt, prior to the game, you anticipated the Hawkeyes' game plan would be get the ball inside. And so far, that's what they've done. Well, they've gotten it in there. They missed a couple of easy shots. And now you'll be able to see maybe the outside game will open up a little bit. But you've got Iowa all eight points in the paint. Northwestern, they've had to take their shots from the perimeter, just what we anticipated. So far, not challenging A.C. Earl, the conference's top shot blocker. And why would you want to? Kevin Smith is coming to the lineup at the point for the Hawks. He comes in, bringing a 5.1 scoring average into the game. Again, I will get the ball inside, but this time it is stripped, and Baldwin comes up with a steal. Boy, that's uh, at least two for him already. Now 83 on the year. Rankin from 16, so the big guy goes outside and nails it. And the Wildcats have the lead back at 10-8. I would really think Rankin will be one of the very, very good players in the Big Ten over the next three years. The deflection by Howell, the steal by Rankin, Baldwin holds up. A.C. Earl trying to chop it away, but picks up the personal foul. First foul on AC, second on the Hawks. The Wildcats haven't been called for one yet. Coach Davis not happy about that one. As Rankin shows the ball and then comes across, Earl strips the ball on the way up. Didn't think he got the arm or the hand. Northwestern makes a change. Number 30, Kip Kirkpatrick comes into the lineup, a freshman from Lexington, Kentucky, where he was a first-team All-Stater. As to the free throw line goes Kevin Rankin. Rankin, a 79% free-throw shooter. He has five, and the Wildcats' lead is three. You know, Larry, Northwestern had a lot of players leave from last year, some by graduation, some by transfer. But uh, if David Holmes, Kevin Nixon, and Rex Walters were here, this would be a very formidable group. All three transferred. Evan Peterson, who would have been back as a junior, decided to take a two-year church mission, so he will be back eventually in the Northwestern program, but not for a while. Again, a Northwestern steal by Baldwin. That ball with lightning quick gives the Wildcats a 14-8 lead. Now, once again, extension and surprise by the Wildcats on that press. Wow, there's the Hawkeyes that change up on defenses. I get right here, Baldwin will strip the ball as Kevin Smith brings it down. And Baldwin, opportunity to score. And it's the pressure surprising Iowa. Carelessness with the ball. And the Hawkeyes find themselves down six points. Last thing that Iowa wants to do is give the Wildcats some momentum in this their home finale. As you see, the Wildcats have been hot. There's Baldwin. And the freshman has got six points. And it's an eight-point Wildcat lead. Northwestern 16, Iowa 8. And you'll note again, the coaching staff calls the defense from the bench, and the guards give hand signals to the rest of the players indicating what they want. This time it's a zone, a straight 2-3. A.C. Earl against Rankin. Tries to move across the lane. Rankin's defense forces the walk. A.C. guilty of the turnover. The ball back to Northwestern. So far, it's a frustrated group of Hawkeyes. You look at the turnover situation, a bit stunning. Iowa with seven of them, and you would think 
it might be the Wildcats that would lead in that category. Not so. Iowa tries to get something going offensively. Barnes. And coming up with the rebound, hit first Patrick. The Wildcats on a run as Brooks looks in against Skinner. Open. Leslie, who rarely misses from three-point range. Again, 51% from three-point range. Second in the country. Here is Moses. Moses, from the perimeter, connects for the Hawkeyes. And Val Barnes twisted an ankle. Val's going to have to come out next time the clock gets stopped. He twisted that right ankle. Tom Davis has seen that, has already made the substitution. He's trying to get the official to take a timeout because Val is ailing. You see him talking at the top of your screen. As from the perimeter, a three is nailed. The Gross goes out to three-point range and connects 19 to 10. Northwestern with the lead. Barnes just can't even move out there. He's not a threat. Offensively, can't guard anybody defensively, and the officials have not allowed him to get the injured player out. Earl bottled up, fires anyway with the offensive rebound. Winters. And Winters gets the putback for the Hawkeyes. On the steal, it is Barnes. Bad ankle and all. So Northwestern a moment ago led by nine. Iowa cuts it back to seven. And the first foul of the game called against the Wildcats. And you can see Val Barnes coming out hopping. And of course he's had trouble with his ankles this whole season and the end of his junior college career last year. John Streep attending to him. Now the Hawkeyes on that out-of-bounds violation, a travel. There's a dead ball. The ball had to be held in position. Last foul, by the way, on Winters. We said it was against the Wildcats. That was incorrect. So now still none against Northwestern. And three against Iowa. On the drive, Baldwin. And this will count. Goaltending gives the bucket to Pat Baldwin. He has eight points. And the Wildcats may be off to their best start of the year. Well, a turnover here by Street. Trying to get it in bounds. He just dumped it in. As the five-second count was expiring, Wildcats intercepted, then the layup, and goaltending call. Iowa plays from a nine-point deficit, just under 12 minutes left in the first half. Davis, nice entry pass to Winters, and going over his head to get the rebound, Charles Howell. Brooks will slow it up outside, it is Leslie. And the Hawkeyes get the bounce, and Street comes up with it, and Iowa will try to set up an offense. Skinner gets around Broats, but there's no shot. So the Hawkeyes will once again go to the half-court offense with 11-20 to play in the first half. The Wildcats with the lead, 21-12. Even though Iowa will not like it, they have to be patient. Iowa likes to get out and go, take shots quickly. But to beat the varying defenses they're seeing, they have to recognize them and be patient at the offensive end. And who's got this loose basketball? Somehow Winters comes up with it. A lot of players had a hand on it. The officials did not choose to blow any whistles. Some contact, and now Iowa comes up with it. And that was good patience by Chris Street. Baldwin goes for a steal, but this time he makes contact and picks up a foul. I'll tell you, Baldwin, he is a learning lesson on how to steal the ball. He stays out of the passing lane doesn't really attack the man with the ball, waits to see when there's a blind spot, and then goes after it. And so, the Hawkeyes and the Wildcats see Northwestern in front early, and Wood Barnes will step on Leslie's foot right there. He rolls that right ankle right off Leslie's right foot with that sprain, and then he had to stay in there for about another 90 seconds before the Hawkeyes could get him out. Street looks to inbound to Moses. Oh! And underneath, there's contact and a foul call. Trying to get position, Charles Howell, Gary Muncy right there to whistle him for the foul. 
Speaking of playing with pain, as Val was trying to do, you know something about that, about telecasting with pain and something about <laughs> ankle injuries. What has happened to you? Why are you wearing sneakers with your blue blazer? Uh, it's kind of the Letterman look of broadcasting, but it was the same type of thing just Val Barnes had. Just uh, in a pickup game, I rolled my foot over on a player. That was the same type of injury. AC's bucket rule count, and he is fouled. Only yours is broken. And mine is broken. We the Hawkeyes hitting the offensive glass hard. A.C. Earl gets the two and the chance at a three-point play. This is Iowa tradition. Rebound, rebound. Four people right on the glass. Finally getting it to go down. First foul on Rankin. Third against the Cats. Earl now off the bench for a five and a change at the point. Smith in, Skinner out for the Hawks. And so the rotations get changed a little bit. Barnes out for Iowa. Reese will not play any in this game with a broken finger for Northwestern. And Val Barnes has gone to the locker room. I'm sure they're going to look at retaping or taping that ankle in a different position. And Northwestern's depth was somewhat suspect even before the injury to Reese, and it occurred in practice on Monday. Here's Todd Leslie for his first points. Not this time, but with a rebound is AC. Todd Leslie, an excellent shooter, just not having a good night at all. Hawkeyes have cut a one-time nine-point Northwestern lead down to six. Iowa having troubles hanging onto the basketball tonight. Just a little impatient. A zero. Chris Street on a pass exchange. Street had left the position. Earl thought he would still be there. Non-communication. You got to communicate in this game, and that's one of the things that Bill Foster really teaches, especially younger teams. And of course, the Iowa team, very young, and Chris. Iowa will have everybody back next year. Street now leaving, replaced by Winters as Kirkpatrick inbounds. Here's Brooks, and contact inside as Brooks that time went tried to go between two Hawkeyes, and the foul is spotted. You've got winners and AC are all going to get a piece of this one. Winners gets it from behind, almost dunks it as Bros goes up. Now the officials are talking. That winners is, or Earl, that's what they're debating. Well, or the debate of the goaltend. Was it goaltending or no goaltending? Bill Foster, of course, thinks it was goaltending. Foster's been around a while. This is his 31st year as a head coach. I think you can tell what the decision was just by the look on Foster's face. It was not goaltending. Sid Rodeheffer, the outside official, has position on this to see it the whole way and shook his head no right from the beginning. No goaltending. And they assessed the foul to Winters. The Don Brooks goes to the line. You ask what kind of player Don Brooks is. A senior gives team leadership. But the coaching staff calls him a Pete Rose in shorts. He does the little things. Sets the table for the rest of the team. In his final Wildcat game at home, he's got six points. And out of bounds off Northwestern gives Iowa the basketball. 22-15, the Wildcats lead. 9.56 to go in the first half. Ball game tied up four times early. And the Wildcats went on an 8-0 run and haven't looked back. In the half-court trap, giving Kevin Smith some problems. Hawkeyes finish it up at home Sunday afternoon against the Buckeyes. Winner on the jam. This is a very short lineup for the Hawkeyes with Skinner, Smith, and you have winners playing the four position. Baldwin left it so flat, had to be intimidated by Earl. Winners twists and scores. And that shot was blocked. Winners had enough strength to still push it beyond the block and roll it off the rim. Winners has eight points. Broke up the baseline. Coming off that 22-point performance against Illinois, Broke has eight in this one. He tries to finish his Wildcat career in style. Smith doesn't get the roll, but underneath, there's a foul. Well, they're going to call it offensive goal hitting. AC Earl caught the net while the ball was on the rim. The penetration stop and pop, one on three, maybe not a good choice. And then Earl just catches the corner of the net. 
And they call offensive goal tended right there on the Hawkeyes. And so now Street will try to harass Kevin Rankin to inbounds. 8.58 to go, first half, 24-19. Northwestern with the lead in the ball. Baldwin trying to get things started for the Wildcats. Rhodes against a much shorter player in Smith, finds Howell underneath. The Wildcats doing the job of penetrating, and the bucket will count. So Howell is in his second hoop. The Northwestern's lead grows to seven. With a foul, Troy Skinner, where Troy will be his second for the Hawkeyes, their fifth. A change in the Iowa lineup now as Jay Webb comes in for the first time. And Winters, look at a momentary breather. Of course, Jay Webb started the last game for the Hawkeyes against Purdue and had a disappointing game. He's just been up and down all year long. Had some great games, and then just hasn't been able to get into the flow in other contests. Al completing the three-point play to give the Wildcats a 27-19 lead. Webb trying to get clear underneath against Howell. And he had the block by Rankin. The Wildcats with an opportunity to take their biggest lead of the game. They have led by as many as nine. A two here would give them a lead of ten. Tom Davis shakes his head back and forth in front of the Iowa bench. Certainly the Wildcats have to come into this ballgame loose. It can hardly be said for the Hawkeyes who really feel this is a must win as far as getting into the tournament. With Ohio State waiting in the wings on Sunday. Webb comes up with a loose basketball. And that additional pressure doesn't let you play with the natural freedom that you would have other games. Street can't get the roll the first time. Rankin blocks the second time. Street misses the third time, so he gets the offensive rebounds, but can't finish him off. He was looking for the foul with a head fake, unable to get it. Then almost came up with a steal. And now does come up with a foul. And Chris Street is wondering why it can't be called at the other end. For the Hawkeyes, their sixth team foul, the Wildcats have only three. Gary Muncy explaining to Chris Street who isn't buying it. Meanwhile, Bill Foster making a change. At number 22 he was talking to is Eric Sampson. He is another freshman from Chicago, from St. Ignatius High School. Rankin at the line. Northwestern has hit six of seven from the free throw line. The Hawkeyes are one out of one. The best Rankin can do would be give his team a nine-point lead. Tom Davis against Northwestern. A record of eight and one. Rankin's got seven. The Wildcats, the surprise early. They lead the Iowa Hawkeyes by a score of 28 to 19. 7-18 to go in the first half. We'll be right back. The late 28-19. What are the key factors? Well, the change-up defenses by the Wildcats have been very effective against Iowa, and it's kept the Wildcats rested. And they haven't got any foul problems. They only have three team fouls. The offensive rebound statistic in this game, rather interesting. Iowa's got the advantage there, but again, they're just not finishing them off. However, Winters has had the hot hand. He already has 10 points for Iowa. 28-21, Hawkeyes trail by seven. Brooks fouled by Earl, and for AC, that is his second. And AC Earl catches an elbow. Baldwin making the penetration, a chase from behind by Smith. He actually deflects it right to Brooks. We talked about the Pete Rosen shorts. There he is in the right place, right time, doing a little thing. And it looks like he's going to have AC Earl maybe check with the dentist here tomorrow. So AC is not fouled out of a game all year. Amazing for someone who's blocked the number of shots that AC has. 96 coming in tonight. 
Rhodes, the senior out of Long Beach, California. He's got 10. And once again, the Wildcats lead is 9. Iowa will play it from the sideline. That ball with only a freshman. Todd Leslie, just a sophomore, ranking a freshman. How a sophomore, a very young Wildcat team. One senior starter as Skinner comes back in, replacing Kevin Smith. And Bill Foster has done a very good job recruiting. He's got a couple, three players coming in next year. One, six foot ten, Dewey Williams from Indiana. That is a very, very good player. He'll move in, probably start right away. Inside it goes to Iowa's hottest scorer, Winters. And this time we will get an opportunity at the free throw line. The reason Winters is having such success is he's very quick and strong against the Wildcat matchups. The people that are quick enough just aren't strong enough. The people that are strong enough just aren't quick enough with Winters. And he's got the first step jump. He's got the hops to get up to the rim quickly. Winters now with 11, of course. The death of his grandmother really cost James about two weeks of practice. He'd been making tremendous progress. When you're a freshman and you lose that kind of practice, Tom Davis saying earlier that really has affected him. But obviously now he has bounced back, having come back in and got the practice time and back up to where his game was a couple of weeks ago. Here's Baldwin on the come around. Baldwin, a 51% field goal shooter, hotter than that tonight. He's got 10. And the Wildcats have their biggest lead of the game. And Baldwin's got five in a row. We're down to the six-minute mark in the first half. The Wildcats trying to break a 17-game losing streak, their last victory against Dartmouth in late December. Troy Skinner's going to have to start looking for a shot. With Val Barnes out of there, Iowa's perimeter shooting needs to go up. Davis tries to come up the baseline. And as Rodell drives, he draws a foul. So with 5.42 left to play in the first half, Northwestern will pick up now just their 15 foul. You'll watch Northwestern is very aware of James Moses and his presence. The man they're leaving open at times has been Skinner. He's got a tremendous inside move. The screener got open. Davis for the easy two. Chris Street, good job of finding him. Gross is open, has one three already, now has two. 13 for Gross, who suddenly turned score in the last two games. The way to go out as a senior. Wildcats 11-point lead their biggest. And again, Northwestern guilty of the push. And Rankin now has drawn his third. So this becomes a key factor for a depleted Wildcat team. Again, one of their starters, Lucius Reese, can't play because of a broken finger. Into the lineup for the first time comes a walk-on from Upper Arlington, Ohio, a senior walk-on, Jay Conti. In fact, they found him on the Northwestern crew team. <laughs> With the deflections you were talking about earlier, come October 15th, Bill Foster just held open tryouts. Some players who were seniors made a job on this team with a walk-on. Now, during that tryout period, he had 45 youngsters try out. And I want the transition basket gets the hoop from Chris Street. Hawks back to the 9, 35-26. Here's Leslie. He's had a tough time against Iowa this year. Had to hit a shot tonight. Got 11 against the Hawkeyes last time, but just one three. That's way below his average. As you watch his shot, it's a great release. The rotation looks good. It's dead on. Just a matter of time until he pops two or three in a row. It looks good each time. For Broats, his second personal foul. As the Wildcats now are in the penalty. That is their seventh, and the line goes James Moses, who's a 69% free throw shooter. James averaging almost 11 on the season, however, averaging 16 points over the last five. And Street picks up the foul for Chris's second. So now the Hawkeyes have four players, Skinner, Winters, Street, and Earl, all with two fouls. And of course, if any of them pick up one more in this half, that puts them in a critical situation for the game. And once again, 
Val Barnes hasn't been back on the bench since they took him off with a sprained ankle. So at this point, he's certainly not going to play anymore this half. There'll probably be a decision made at halftime whether he will be back or not for the Hawkeyes, and that cuts down that rotation at the guard position. Howell now with six, and the Wildcats lead by ten. Talk about Val Barnes, and you know that he scores a lot, but he certainly contributes other places. Well, he's a very smart player. He uses ball fakes and shot fakes very well to get people out of position and open up that middle so passes can be made very easily. Entries into AC Oil and Chris Street. Drive by James Moses. 37-28, Iowa. Back with a nine. Skinner almost has the steal and then can't hang on. That steal was made possible really by Kevin Smith coming from behind, making Leslie pivot as he did. It was right into Troy Skinner. Skinner just lost the ball out of bounds. So the senior Broats will inbound. And he is crowded by Moses and fouled by Moses. You see James Grin. He finds the call by Gary Muncy a little tough to swallow. It was a good double team. Iowa had the ball trapped in the corner. All they need to do is stay straight up because there's no place to go except lob that ball, and that's the time you're going to look for the steal on a lob situation. Don Davis trying to get his team back in the ballgame without Val Barnes. So difficult. Again, Val turned an ankle early in the going. And for the left-hander, Leslie, his first point of the game. He comes in, the leading Wildcat score at 14.5, so Northwestern has really accomplished a lot without Leslie providing any offense. And that's the bad news for the Hawkeyes. Again, the Wildcats by 11. In conference play, Northwestern averaging but 65 points a game. Already 39 in this one, and still more than four minutes to go in the first half. Rodell Davis can't put the rebound back. He'll try it again. Strong offensive rebounds. Without the offensive rebounding the Hawkeyes have had, they would be down 15, 18 points. Here's Davis for two in a row. Davis now with eight. And the foul called on Kevin Smith. Well, the fouls are being redistributed evenly. They certainly are. At one point, the Hawks had seven, and the Wildcats had three. Now the team fouls. Ten against Iowa and seven against Northwestern. Bill Foster returns to his bench. Foster, one of only two coaches in the country, who have won 20 or more games at four different schools. Eddie Sutton, the other one. Yeah, Eddie did it this year with Oklahoma State, didn't he? That was his fourth. Foster had been the only one. Of course, his career includes South Carolina, Duke, Utah, Rutgers, and Bloomsburg State in Pennsylvania. Al now perfect, four of four from the free throw line, and that's no surprise because in all games, in all conference games, he's the Big Ten's leading free thrower. Moses back in. And we have gotten the word right now. It looks like Al Barnes will not return tonight with that sprained ankle. They're going to keep him out the rest of the night. So the Hawkeyes will have to overcome. Play the first eight minutes of the game. Now, Val is averaging 27 minutes. Only AC Earl averages more. He averages 12.7, and only AC Earl averages more. So that tells you how valuable Val has been. And if there's been a go-to guy for the Hawkeyes, many times this year, it has been Val Barnes. The Hawkeyes try to do it without him. Earl on the turnaround. Seven for AC, and the Hawkeyes are back to within... 7 at 41 to 34. 324 to go first half. Yo, yo, in the corner. Roach dumps it inside for Howell, and it's Northwestern ball. Wildcats, 57% shooting on the night. Mac in conference play, they average 44%. That's their overall average, 47%. But tonight, an incredible performance. It's part of that seniors night. People get pumped up, excited, playing in front of their friends and relatives, parents. Well, that's Patrick. why Don Brooks is having that kind of game, I'll tell you. That time it was Kirkpatrick. It's a 44-34 Wildcat lead. And the interception by Moses. 
We'll have to look it up, but this has to be one of the higher scoring halves of the season for the Wildcats. When you're a ball handling, you, under, you have to understand who you're throwing the ball to and where you are throwing it to. Rildell Davis with that bad leg, it's difficult for him to handle the ball on the run. He's a very good post-up player, but you just can't give it to him on the run as well as you can some of the other players. Underneath a towel against A.C. Earl, who had two fouls, and Howe makes the contact, and he picks up the foul. Big-time play by A.C. Earl. Now, there is a shot blocker, one of the leading shot blockers in the country, that instead of going for the block here, he knows he's got two fouls, doesn't want to get the third. The way to avoid that is stay in there and just take the charge. Smart play by A.C. Earl. So many times you hear the basketball intelligence of A.C., that's just one more example. Earl trying to find Moses, and Baldwin knocks it out of bounds. Hawkeye ball. We may look back at that play, Larry, and say it's one of the biggest plays in the game where AC would have gone up, he'd have probably gotten called for his third foul. Moses off the baseline. And now straight with a rebound. And this time it's off the Hawks. Iowa has a very high number of offensive rebounds and not very many points to show for all of them. Not getting the conversion, not being strong in traffic. Many times we've talked about what it's like to play at the upper level of Division I basketball. I really believe it's being able to catch the ball in traffic and score in traffic because the bodies are so physical. Davis going for the steal, but he knocks it out of bounds. Two minutes, 18 seconds to play in the first half. Wildcats with a lead of 10. But again, depth is really a problem for Northwestern. I guess the question you'd have to ask is, can they sustain it for 40 minutes? Hawkeyes have to take some heart in that. Earl can't hang on. The Wildcats will get a third opportunity. You ever hear of frustration, overtime? Hawkeyes are experiencing it right now. They have to keep this game in check close at hand at halftime, and not let the Wildcats extend this lead. Jay Webb now comes into the lineup. With Val Barnes out, Winters is playing well, but it occurs to you that somebody's going to have to surface who maybe hasn't in recent weeks and take up some of the slack. It's going to be a player that's going to have to bust loose for double figures in the second half. No scoring from the guards at all tonight. Of course, Barnes didn't score while he was in. Skinner and Smith have not scored either. A minute, 50 seconds left in the first half. The game was tied up at 2, 4, 6, and 8, and since then, the Wildcats have had the lead. And the game plan for the Wildcats is going right by the book. Take time off the clock. This is like a control offense. You come out, spread it, weave it, till the clock will get down to 15, then they'll set up a play. Shot clock at 10. And with a shot clock at 7, Groats hits again. Groats is going crazy. He's got 16 points on this one, including three three-pointers. I don't think he's a Pete Rose. He's more like a Jose Canseco right now. He's hitting the home run. Tonight he is. Moses tries to answer with a three. Yes! Back to a 10-point game, 47-37. Well, we've seen Moses all season long. His shot has gone AWOL, and then it's come back for active duty. Hopefully for the Hawks tonight, he's going to be on the beam. Shot clock still a factor. In fact, there are 10 more seconds on the first half clock than the shot clock, so Iowa should get another possession. Baldwin on the penetration. And he has 12 in the first half. 49-37. Wildcats. Northwestern comes in averaging 65 points in Big Ten games. They already have 49. Now remember in Iowa City, they only had 18 and a half. In a game that Iowa won 82-66. But here at Welsh Ryan Arena, it's a different cat team. Now the Hawkeyes really get to set up Maybe one of their best offensive plays of the evening, and that's the out-of-bounds play. Five seconds left in the first half. Winners to inbound. 49-37 Northwestern. 
Moses. Got it. Moses, a couple of threes at the end of the half. Iowa needed somebody to get hot. Moses did. But the Wildcats will go off the floor with a nine-point lead. The halftime score, Northwestern 49, the Iowa Hawkeyes 40, and the Hawkeyes now knowing they'll be without Val Barnes a chance to go to the locker room and regroup. Well, they'll now have the time to talk about the rotation and the changes they're going to have to make position-wise in the second half. Secondly, the Hawkeyes can think now about how they can convert on so many offensive rebounds that they did not get points on the first half. So Tom Davis has got some work to do at the half. Halftime score, Northwestern 49, Iowa 40. We'll be right back. Tonight's game is being brought to you by True Value Hardware. Farmland Industries. And by Unical. If you want to know the truth, just ask a farmer. They don't mince words. So to find out why a guy would switch from dual or lasso to eradicate, let's ask a farmer. Greg, why'd you switch? My dealer said, use this product. It's good. Now listen to him, and I'm glad I did. What'd you use before? I used lasso, but it didn't pan out the way I wanted it to. I get real good control with Eradicane at an economical price. For better grass control than dual or lasso, ask a farmer about Eradicane. Oh, Dave, hi. Hi. Remember those tickets your husband bought? Yeah, sure. If this is the only time you've been ticketed by the police recently, you might qualify for a special Farm Bureau auto insurance rate. Thanks. Call us for complete details today. There aren't any fax machines or PCs to help you at this job. And your career path is largely determined by the mood of your horse. So why would anyone choose to work up here in the mountains? Maybe it's the fringe benefits. After trailing at the half by nine, the Hawkeyes back to within three of the Wildcats, 56 to 53. Well, it's a game of streaks, and right now the Hawkeyes are on a good streak, six of eight this half that 75 percent northwestern is three of seven and of course ranking out that takes away a lot of things positive things for the wildcats rebounding a very good passer he's an offensive threat and can match up pretty good with ac earl size wise bell barnes sitting the game out after turning an ankle eight minutes into the first half the senior Brooks finds howell Leslie hasn't hit a three yet till now. His first basket is fifth point. And the Wildcats are really lining it up from three-point range. They now have six three-pointers. Baldwin leads the break on an Iowa turnover and finishes it off. Baldwin now seven of 11 shooting in the ball game. Oh, he's still red hot. 21 for Moses. He's got 11 in the first five minutes of the second half alone. 61-55 Wildcats. Last Iowa lead was 8-6. With more than 16 and a half minutes to go in the first half. We're now down to five minutes deep into the second half. And the Hawks still trying to regain the lead. If the Hawkeyes want to wear down the Wildcats, this is where they have to apply pressure. Make Northwestern work at the offensive end of the court. Webb with the rebound. Winters in deep. Right there. 13 for Winters. 61-57. Hawks back to within four. A bucket by Winters enables him to tie a career high. He got 13 at Purdue also. And Brost is starting to look a little tired out there. And this will start to hurt 
the Wildcats, it's the pace keeps up. The running, the pressing, and half-court defense. As we've said, Rankin now with four fouls, and Reese not able to play because of his broken finger. Really, the Wildcats have an extremely short bench. Only 12 players on the roster now with Reese out of there, and four of them are walk-ons. Kirkpatrick throws it away over our heads, in fact. And it is Hawkeye basketball. Mac, I know if your ankle weren't broken, you would have <laughs> sprung up and got that one. James Winters is excited now. He knows they're in position to really apply more pressure Tom on the Davis Wildcats. to the scorer's table. And the officials confer. We'll look and see if they're talking about time maybe on the clock. 14-17 is what shows on the game clock right now. Tom Rucker, the lead official, talks it over with the Hawkeyes' mentor. Completing his fifth year at Iowa, already 107 victories to his credit. And just 19 away from amassing 400 career victories. Bill Foster wants to find out what they're talking about. Foster, a man known as an architect of programs that needed repair, certainly has had his hands full in this one. They may be discussing whether Leslie's basket was a two-point or a three-point shot. Play resumes, 61-57 Wildcats, 14-17 left. The Hawkeyes bidding for their 19th one of the year, trying to tie Wisconsin and Purdue for fifth place in the league. In fact, that was the discussion with Tom Davis. He thought it should have been a two-pointer instead of a three. He wanted to make sure an official saw it. Winners fouled by Baldwin. For the Wildcats, their fourth foul of the half, the Hawkeyes have been assessed just two. It has it, James Winters had a performance tonight. He really has, and this is basically his hometown. He's from Joliet, just outside Chicago. Got a lot of friends and relatives here. Of course, Illinois never recruited him. Northwestern didn't. And he's excited to be a Hawkeye, wants to come back to his home state and play well. And has equaled a career high already. Moses. Finally missed one, but A.C. Earl's there trying to put it back. And now Rankin, who's back in with four fouls, grabs the rebound. And Rankin back in with 13 and a half minutes to go. Hawkeyes are going to have to understand and recognize that and really challenge Rankin. Basketball belongs to the Cats. With Rankin with four fouls and a man who has had foul problems, can he play any kind of defense? Well, I don't think he will. Once the ball goes inside, he's going to have to almost let A.C. Earl score. James Moses probably had an option to let that ball go out of bounds and still be the Hawkeyes' ball. I think he tried to grab it, so he had an advantage of one on nothing to see if he could get an easy layup, lost his balance, and the ball went out of bounds to the Wildcats. Northwestern using time on the clock in every possession. Brooks fires. Brooks now with five three-pointers in the game, a total of 22 points, equaling his career high, which he got on Saturday against Illinois. Talk about going on in a blaze of glory. And he looks like, and he's passing like he expects to score 20 points every time anyway. Webb rolls in a crowd and draws the foul. And that was a good play against Webb. Gave the head and shoulder fake. Rankin didn't go for it. Then he spun to the basket. Rankin wasn't going to stop him. It took another player to do it. He gives the little fake. Power dribble. Goes up. And Leslie gets that foul. It's Leslie second and the Cats fifth. But to keep the pressure applying to the Wildcats, to have them wonder how to win a basketball game, the Hawkeyes have to stay close. Webb has to make free throws. Webb from the line this year, 62% on the night, 0 of 1. Hawks back to within 6, 64-58 Northwestern. Hey! 
Wesley rips down the rebound for the Cats. A Big Ten team has not gone through the conference season without a win since Chicago in 45 and 46. Northwestern desperately trying to avoid that and playing very well so far. Here's Baldwin. Not afraid of the Earl. Took it right at him. Baldwin really has a high release, and it's really one-handed. He doesn't keep two hands on the basketball. Smith and Skinner pair up along the back line with Barnes out due to the injury. Skinner misfiring on the three. And it's a jump ball, and the Hawkeyes get to keep it. The possession arrow pointing Iowa's direction. Jay well, Webb being a factor on the boards tonight, where he hadn't been for a couple of other games. We talked about somebody needing to surface. He has done it. There's the Northwestern story, their last conference win against the Hawkeyes on this floor last year. Skinner gets it inside to Earl. And Northwestern doing a pretty good job on the boards in this half. But the turnover gives it right back to the Hawkeyes. So it will be Iowa ball when play resumes following a timeout. 11.57 to go in the game. We'll be back after the Hawkeyes 66-58. The three-point shooting really amazing because Northwestern has seven three-pointers. There's only one of them from the country's second-best three-point shooter, Todd Leslie. But when you look at them, they are among the top ten schools in the country in three-point shooting. And that seven for nine isn't going to hurt their ranking there at all. Skinner, Moses, Street, Davis, and Earl, the Hawkeye lineup right now. Rhodes, Rankin, Hal, Leslie, and Baldwin in for Northwestern. They've got their starters in, and Street puts it in. Hawks back to within six, 66-60. The 10-second violation against the Cats. You talked about Iowa needing to get back into this one on the defensive end. There's a big defensive stand. Well, when you can hold somebody 10 seconds in that backcourt area, you've had five people work awfully hard to get it done. That's a good team effort. Of course, Chris Street on the point position does an excellent job. And the Hawkeyes have to finish it off. Here's Moses. 23 for Moses, 13 in this half alone in nine minutes of play. And I was back to within four, 66-62. This is a big opportunity defensively for the Hawkeyes. <laughs> Hawkeyes will want to keep the pressure on the Wildcats, make them take a poor shot out of control. And Leslie, that is not his shot. He does not shoot the ball off the dribble. He forced that one, and Iowa has a chance to pull as close as they have been since the early moments of this game. And they'll have another chance as it's out of bounds off Northwestern. There is Val Barnes. And you can look at that right ankle. It's at absolutely a wrap already. His left ankle has the tennis shoe. And we get Ports just to <laughs> move a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just there it there is. There it is. It's the right ankle. The Val turned about eight minutes into the game. The Hawkeyes have been trying to do it without him. And after regrouping at the half, after trailing by nine at the half, Iowa fighting their way back in it. Moses, for a three. And a scrap for the rebound jump ball, and this time it will be Northwestern's ball. But that was good inside-out basketball by the Hawkeyes. They got it into the post twice and they've got it back outside to open perimeter shooters. Now the Hawkeyes have to make that shot. Here's Brooks. Skinner can't be leaving Brooks. He's made too many baskets. He's made five threes in this one, a career high, and has 22 points. down to 15. Baldwin. Goal tending. He will get the hoop. 
It brings Tom Davis off the Iowa bench. 68-62. Let's get another look at it. Baldwin goes up. Ready to shoot it left-handed and switches it back to the right hand. I don't know. You have to touch the basketball, don't you? I'd say you have to. It looked like he whiffed. Wildcats doing a good job keeping pressure on Skinner on the perimeter. Moses has been able to work free, but Skinner's had a tough time doing that. The Wildcats come up with a turnover. That's where James Moses still needs to learn. He's hot from the outside. Take the outside shot. Don't drive into trouble. Rankin against Earl. And AC quickly reaching in and knocking away. Kevin Smith will come back into the Iowa attack. Skinner will lead. 8.57 to go. Kevin Smith running the team will have to be sure Iowa gets good offensive opportunities every time down court because Northwestern is very good at running the delay game, keeping control of the basketball, and the time is winding down. 8.57 left to go in this game. Webb's in for Earl. Wildcats have generally wound the clock down under 20 seconds before taking a shot. 8.45 left. 68-62, Northwestern. Shot clock at eight. Baldwin on the drive. And Webb has another big rebound for Iowa. That was a good defensive stand by the Hawkeyes. for the steal. Howell, straight having trouble with it. Who's got it? Another jump ball, and this time, the ball will go back to the Hawkeyes. I'm not sure I've seen a floor all season with this many jump balls. Kevin Smith, when he released that pass, really didn't have a lot of mustard behind it. It kind of floated over there, allowing the defender to get into the passing lane, have the opportunity to tie up Chris Street. <laughs> We've hit the eight-minute mark in this one, one that Iowa desperately needs in their hopes to get into the final 64 in the NCAA tournament. Selections, of course, will be announced Sunday evening. Moses looking for straight, but Groats was in the way. Skinner and Davis about to come back for the Hawkeyes. Iowa's defense has really made a difference, but the Wildcats continue to cling to that lead. But Iowa's really cooled them off after Northwestern got 49 in the first half. And Rankin gets his fifth on a push-off. So Rankin will leave with seven minutes and 20 seconds left in the game. Now you would look at the Wildcat bench and you would think there would be virtually no way that they could replace the 6'11", 245-pounder. As you look and see Tom Davis and James Moses talk, I'm sure they're discussing James driving versus the outside shot. Look here. You do not get to see the foul. What happened? Rankin had the hand low and pushed off on Jay Webb. Rankin has fouled out for the 12th time this year. Obviously, that's been a problem. Hawkeye ball when play resumes. Northwestern with the lead, and we'll be here right back is presented by the authority of the Big Ten Conference Incorporated and is intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express prior written consent of the Big Ten Conference Incorporated is prohibited. In losing rank into fouls, the Wildcats have lost their third best score and their number one rebounder. And somebody that matches up well size-wise with either A.C. Earl or Jay Webb. Let's see how they try to keep the ball from Earl. They don't this time. Earl gets it on the pass from Skinner. Webb high for the rebound, and it's blocked by Brooks. Smith. Earl. Webb. Not very good shooting, but awfully good for your offensive rebounding statistics. Trying to beat the field, Kirkpatrick, but the pass thrown way over his head. 
68-64. Northwestern with the lead. Bill Foster trying to pilot his team to their first conference victory. And since that was not touched, it will be Iowa ball at their end of the floor with 6.37 to go. And people can see it's just not luck when Northwestern took Michigan State down to three-point game here. Foul on Earl, his third. For the Hawkeyes, only their third of the half, so they're a long way from being in the penalty. The Hawkeyes without Val Barnes tonight. Again, he turned an ankle eight minutes into the game and has been ruled out for this one. Status for Sunday against the Buckeyes not yet known. How by far the biggest player on the floor for the Wildcats right now. He is 6'9". Kirkpatrick is 6'5". Leslie is 6'5". Baldwin is 6'1". And Brooks is 6'5". So it's not a very tall Wildcat lineup. But it hasn't been the size. It's been the trouble guarding people on the perimeter or letting Baldwin drive and penetrate. That's been the problem. I was on the board. Shot clock at 13. Leslie. Earl has rebound position, struggles to maintain it, and a foul is spotted. Earl going down on the floor, trying to get the basketball. Instead, he gets the foul, his fourth. Scramble right here. He's still reaching around, saying a foul. And pretty, now, pretty ticky tacky there. He will leave with four fouls. AC goes out with 5.54 to play. He has not fouled out of a game all year, has rarely been in foul trouble. So the advantage Iowa had when Rankin fouled out, now somewhat nullified with AC on the bench in foul difficulty. There's Brooks and Winters with the rebound. James may be playing the best game of his young Hawkeye career. Baldwin set that up. He went right down towards the lane, and then he knew the open man in the corner. He flashed out, just anticipating the pass coming from Skinner. 5.39 left. Hawkeyes have not led since the 16.40 mark in the first half. They're down by four, 68-64. Moses forced out of bounds. It's Wildcat ball. And Tom Davis will go to his bench for Chris Street. Down to 521. The scoreboard stuck at 68-64. Wildcats with the lead, and the Hawkeyes will press. Northwestern guilty of turnovers and add another one to the list. Moses for three. And now the heat is on both ways. Iowa for the tournament, Northwestern to win the game. A one-point game, 68-67 Wildcats, five minutes to go. 26 for Moses. Gross has had the hot hand. Didn't get the shot that time. Iowa's defense really strong in the second half. And again, doing it without the normal rotation. In a crowd, it's Baldwin and Winters with the rebound. The Hawkeyes can take their first lead since the game was barely three and a half minutes old. Moses for the lead. Sweet. And Iowa's got the lead back. And you can't tell if I was at home or on the road. This crowd is evenly split and making a lot of noise. So the Hawkeyes get the lead back, and Iowa's now scored the last seven points in the game. Wildcats have hit their coldest spell of the game. Exactly four to go. And this is when it starts to enter your mind, a team that has not won a game how can they win? What does it take to win? There's a great pass, Kirkpatrick to Baldwin. You break down a defense that puts on pressure, and you do it with the drive. 
12 of Iowa's first 28 games have gone down to the last minute with no more than a three-point separation. The Hawkeyes could be in for another one. Six times this year, the final shot has determined the game for Iowa. Moses. Yes! 29 for Moses, including five three-pointers. And now Northwestern will use a timeout. The Wildcats will go to their bench, trailing by two. It's Iowa, 72 Northwest. Wave of James Moses' shooting ability, being able to get it up. Moses returns from the top of the mountain to put this one down. Boom. Holy Moses. Trying to lead the Hawkeyes uh -huh. to the promised land of the NCAA tournament. I know you're going to say that next. That was the next one. James knocking on the door of a career high. But Wild he, when he stands up and shoots it like that, he's as good as anybody in the Big Ten. The Wildcats, pretty apparently a tired basketball team. Not much depth. And that time, Iowa gets the great Hawkeye basketball. You look at Brooks, who plays with such great determination through the first 25 or 27 minutes of the game, he looks tired. Well, you've just got to be. When you face Iowa's pressure, not even Ohio State will press you 40 minutes of the game. Iowa, one of the few teams in the country that will do that, it just wears on you and wears on you. And again, Northwestern just has not had the ability to go to their reserves and their bench because they haven't had any, number one. Rankin's fouled out. Reese has a broken finger. And they're working with four walk-offs. Yet they are really battling, trying for their first conference win. The Hawkeyes play without Val Barnes for all but eight minutes of this one. The turnover by Smith, and again, the Wildcats. With the ball, a chance to tie with the two, take the lead with the three. Not this time. And the officials are going to discuss it, say that it's Iowa's ball. Muncie pointed it was Northwestern's ball, but he just got turned around. It's a Hawkeye basketball. I don't think there was any question about that call. It's just which way Muncie thought Iowa was going. He's got his directions turned around. Rodell Davis into the Iowa lineup. And Smith you'll, goes out. You'll see if Iowa goes to their roll offense or their delay game. Troy Skinner will just come up, path the pill for a while, try and keep the defender away from him so he doesn't get the five-second count. And Skinner, run some time off the clock. Skinner only 43 turnovers this year. He's done an outstanding job hanging on to the basketball. He's also an outstanding free throw shooter at better than 80%. So he'll have the ball in his hands a lot down the stretch. We're down to a minute 40. Iowa's lead is two. The steal by Brooks. And two turnovers, one by Moses and Smith, late in the game, costing the Hawkeyes. Baldwin cannot tie it, and Street has the rebound. A minute 20 to go. Iowa leads at 72-70. And the Hawkeyes now can move the ball around, try and get a four-point lead and make it very difficult for the Wildcats. Foul situation, Wildcats six, Iowa just four. Possession arrow, by the way, pointing to Northwestern. We're inside the last minute, 55 seconds in the game, 17 on the shot clock. Skinner in deep, nice dish off the street. Iowa lead a four, 46 seconds left. What a comeback bid by the Hawkeyes as the Wildcats will use a timeout. 42 seconds left in the ball game. The Hawkeyes trailing most of the night now have the lead. Wildcats now have to score twice to regain the lead. Certainly a three-point shot will help them immensely, putting pressure on Iowa. And you look at Leslie, Broats, Kirkpatrick, and the team, 43%. Second in the country. Leslie, one of the top performers in the country, and tonight, seven for 11. The positive thing for Iowa, they've only committed four team fouls. They now could give up two more foul situations and have some time taken off the clock, and Northwestern will have to take the ball out of bounds again before the Wildcats can even get to a one and one. Again, the shot clock is off. That's the game clock you're looking at. Broke. 
Davis has it blocked by Davis. Big play by Rodell Davis. A block on the perimeter. And then Brooks trying to get it back. And he commits the foul. You know in the timeout, Tom Davis said we cannot foul on a three-point shot. And right there, Rodell Davis went after that one. He got leather and got the block shot. A little scary, I'm sure, as he went up in the air. If the shot got released, it could have been four. Davis in double figures with 10. Now 11, and the Iowa lead is five. But that's where the wearing down of a player like Don Brooks, who's been in the game for so many minutes, just didn't get the ball off as quickly as he did in the first half. Some big wins for the Hawks this year, five and two against rated teams, but Mac, this one would have to rate as one of the very biggest. Because Iowa pulled with pressure against them. They had to win it on the road. A young team comes a long way for Tom Davis and his staff. The Hawkeyes lead by six, 31 seconds to play. Iowa trying for the 19th win, and we'll be right back. With 31 seconds to play, Iowa leads Northwestern 76-70. You look at the breakdown. After 49 first-half points by Northwestern, the Hawkeyes really tightened the screws. And they did it at the defensive end of the half court that we discussed. They needed to really force Northwestern to work hard on offense and take some poor shots. Able to do so, Iowa back into the game and now with a six-point lead. Of those 36 Iowa second-half points, Moses has 19 of them. But it's a familiar story for the Wildcats who lead, lead, and lead throughout a game. And then at the end, they just come up a little short, either because of the lack of bench or being able to make good judgments certain situations in a game. Moses on the foul. Wildcats will be at the line with 19 seconds to go. They are down by six. Howell, an 86% free throw shooter, best in the conference. There's another factor, Mac. In the first half, the Wildcats go to the line 17 times, hit 15 of them. Second half, 0 of 2 from the strike. Right. And right there, Moses, even though he committed the foul, gives it back to Northwestern. You don't like it. But Iowa, Iowa is not giving up the one and one yet. That's just five team fouls. The three from the corner by Leslie. 16 seconds to go. It's 76 73. And the Hawkeyes are going to have to make some free throws. You can bet on that. And so the Hawkeyes, who have had six games determined on the final shot of the game, are again down to the final 16 seconds in a game that may be up for grabs. It's Iowa 76, Wildcats 73. It's Iowa basketball when play resumes. Tonight's game has been brought to you by... Budweiser, no win, say win. Amana. True Value Hardware. And by Phillips 66 Petroleum. Mac, I mentioned the large number of close games the Hawkeyes have played this year. That has got to pay dividends down the road. But well, certainly you've got to feel more confident in the end of game situations. Now the Hawkeyes, you can be sure without Val Barnes in there, they are going to look for Troy Skinner to get that ball. Troy's going to really have to protect it. People are going to try and strip him and get an opportunity to score a three to tie this. Todd Leslie averaging 14 and a half per game, but has only hit eight in this one, but he hits one in the clutch. A screen in the corner gets Leslie open. Two Iowa defenders over there, but a great shot right from the corner. So here's the story. 16 seconds to play. Iowa with two timeouts, the Wildcats with none. You see the possession arrow would favor the Wildcats. Bottom line is the score. Iowa 76, Northwestern 73, Hawkeye basketball, 16 seconds to go. And only one person out there shoots better than 70% from the free throw line. And that's Troy Skinner. And an immediate foul against the Wildcats. And they push Troy Skinner down after setting up a good pressure defense. So Iowa's best shooter gets to go to the line. Troy, 84% on the year. Broats with his fourth foul. But this is one and one. It's not the automatic two. Northwestern has not committed 10 fouls. So there is pressure. 
right from the start on this one. Kevin Smith about to come in for defensive reasons. Hawks by four. Here comes Smith. Out goes Street. Defensive quickness to be able to guard that three-point perimeter shot. Hawks 15 seconds away from ending a two-game losing streak. Again, the Wildcats still have to score twice. And we're down to 10 seconds, as you see, the scoreboard clock. Brooks. 25 for Brooks. Six three-pointers. It's a one-point game with five seconds left. The Wildcats want to use a timeout. They have no timeouts. They're going to have to see. If they did not have any timeouts, it's a technical foul. The officials call the official scores over. They're huddling at the scores bench while Foster talks to his team. The Cats keep the pressure on Mack with this shot. It's a great job by Broach with a head fake. And then they leave the shooter wide open. You cannot leave the shooter. The ball is the most important thing in the game. It can score. Gets a wide open shot after he's once defended, and he knocks it down. Now, Troy Skinner being called out on the floor by the officials. In Tom Rucker talking, as you look at the Wildcat bench, Cats trying to become a team with a conference victory, not wanting to join a team that last went through a conference season without a win back in 45 46. That was Chicago. Northwestern out of timeout. Iowa then will have a technical and be able to go to the line, shoot free throws, and get the ball out of bounds. The three by Broads is sixth of the night. Makes it a one-point game, 77-76. 13 of 29 games right down to the final minute. That's been the Hawkeye story so far. Hawkeye fans may remember this several years ago at Wichita State in the NCAA tournament. Iowa called an extra timeout late in a tight game and had the same effect. It's happening here only in reverse. Iowa lost that game. Troy Skinner gets the free throw. It gives Iowa the lead of two, 78-76, five seconds to play. But you're looking at two very good young teams. Wildcats have not won games, but you can see the basis with Baldwin, Leslie, and Rankin as a team that in three years from now will be very solid in the Big Ten race. Iowa uses one of their remaining timeouts. They will have the ball following the technical foul on the Wildcats who called a timeout too many. The fish throw it at the basket area that Iowa goes to, so at least Northwestern would have the entire length of court to go in just the five-second period. And that, of course, would be the basket to your right. That's the Iowa offensive end as Street will then bound. He finds Smith, and he is fouled with four seconds to go. Well, the Iowa bench wants to know how one second can go by. And it seemed like Kevin Smith had the ball for a half an hour on that bench. While you look at Bill Foster, he thought Kevin Smith had it for one-tenth of a second. Now, if Smith is the player, the Wildcats definitely won a foul. He is a 38% free throw shooter. There's James Winters. He had 11 first-half points, tied a career high with 13, just two in the second half. But his 11 in the first half virtually kept Iowa in the game when nobody else was producing. He had a very strong performance. And the coaches are at the scorer's table. And Tom Davis just wants to know how in the world only one second can go off. I can't remember what coach had the line, but he said, if I only have a few minutes to live, I want the timekeeper keeping my time because I, <laughs> I get a lot out of those last few minutes. Tom Davis is explaining, I may have a quick player in Kevin Smith, but he can't go from midcourt to the end line in one second. He just can't. It is impossible. This is one of those few scoreboards anymore that don't have the tenths of a second on there. You only see full seconds. The 
That'll be up to Kevin Smith to go to the line, his new free throw style, where he has the ball, and he really steps into it just like he does his jump shot. He brings that right foot up from behind, and he's off the line a little ways. Two seconds, one second. The Cats won't get a shot. The Hawkeyes won it. Iowa comes from behind to win their 19th game of the year at Northwestern, 79-76. It was a much needed come from behind win for the Hawkeyes. Wow, from the Wildcats' viewpoint, you look at it, it's one of those typical come from ahead losses that they've experienced so many times. They just need some more experience, a couple more players added there, and the Hawkeyes now a 